You know how some people can both act and direct? Well, Tommy Lee Jones is not one of those people. Now, it may not be entirely fair to say that, given that he's directed other movies. For the record, he's only directed two TV movies and one other feature. But really, coming out of this, it doesn't fill me with too much hope. I heard this film was getting some pretty mixed reviews, and it's easy to see why. The tone and the story are just all over the place. I mean, I understand that you're trying to show the actual hardships the homesteaders went through during the 1850s, especially when it came to how the women are treated. It's a noble cause in and of itself, but really the way this film is shot and edited just isn't tonally consistent. Note that I said tonally, meaning that the tone doesn't quite match up with one another from scene to scene. Some of the cinematography looks okay. Jones does seem to have an eye for scenery, and he's pulling from some other inspirations, particularly westerns in this case, to create some okay looking shots. Like, they're, they are the kind of shots that if I were to take a screenshot, I'd probably hang it on a wall as an art piece. But then there are some sequences that are just put into the film that are shot in a way that they're just basically being creepy for the sake of being creepy and not really being in service to the story. There are also some really weird edits in this movie that feel like scenes were either cut out or they forgot to shoot some key scenes and basically had to patch it up in post. And that's really what it feels like because some of these scenes that they just drop in, they literally just drop in right out of nowhere, almost like somebody accidentally put the wrong thing on the timeline. And really, the scenes that kind of cause those problems are scenes that really could have been cut from the film at large in order to allow the story and just everything to flow better. And that's really one of the major problems, which is why it just feels so haphazard, so intrusive when some of these scenes pop up. Almost like they just put them in there at the last minute to meet some sort of quota or checklist. We also have a few instances of what Doug Walker calls drive-by cinema. It's where you basically just have a scene that happens, and then it ends, and it fades out. And no scene really leads into the next one. It's pretty much just a scene happens, it ends, new scene. They're basically just episodic snippets. They don't really connect with one another. They don't really flow from one to the next. In just case, here's a scene, it's done. Here's another scene, it's done. It just didn't have a flow to it. That's pretty much more what I'm getting at. I mean, episodic storytelling is a way a lot of films tell their story now, but the way it's executed in this film during pretty much the good middle chunk, kind of at the end of the first act and during much of the second act, it's just a bit, well, jumpy. Now, in addition to some of the just the haphazard way this film was edited, there were also a great deal of unintentionally funny moments. And I think kind of the main problem with why some of these moments were unintentionally funny is that, for example, you have the actions of the characters that are really serious. You have the music swelling and being really serious, but it's not shot in a way that makes it feel serious. And what doesn't help is Tommy Lee Jones' almost deadpan face during some of the stuff. It's really hard not to spoil a film in case people want to see it, and even though I don't like it, I still maintain that policy, but there's just this one scene that it's supposed to be a very dramatic scene of basically revenge, for lack of a better term, and you just have Tommy Lee Jones doing all this stuff as part of this kind of major petty revenge thingy, completely straight-faced, but the cinematography just doesn't complement it very well to the point where it just looks like a comedy. It just looks like the fact that the cinematography is not taking it seriously, and so it's kind of the case, well, if the visuals aren't making it look serious, then why do we need to take it seriously? And even the audience just kept laughing at some of these moments that just try so hard to be taken seriously, but you just can't. If there's one thing I had to praise the film for, it would have to be the acting. Tommy Lee Jones, Hilary Swank, James Spader, William Fichtner, there's a lot of famous names and a lot of famous people that are in this movie, and they all turn in some really good performances. The film just suffers from the fact that, as a director, Jones just doesn't have a clear vision. I think that's really the main problem with this film, is that as he's directing this film, he doesn't have a clear idea of what he wants, because there are times where it's trying to be almost like a John Wayne-style western, then at other times it's trying to be like the Coen Brothers version of True Grit, and then at other times still it's trying to be like Unforgiven. 
It was almost kind of like he was afraid to go all one way and be a traditional Western, and, or all the other way, being a progressive anti-Western, that he decided to try to marry the two approaches via shotgun. Overall, you can see the effort that was put in, but the film really needed more of a guiding hand to actually kind of keep it on track and just have a solid approach instead of trying to basically juggle all this stuff. Because, I mean, the story itself I could get into, but I kept getting pull of, pulled out of it by the inconsistent tone, the really weird editing, and the fact that it just ha doesn't have any vision. Even some of the cinematography, while looking okay, it just didn't really have a sense of identity. It just felt like a bunch of different people were working on it, or I'm not really sure. Again, it goes down to the issue that Tommy Lee Jones probably didn't have a clear idea of what he wanted to do with this film. He just wanted to adapt the novel into a film, and it just kind of stopped there. So really, I can't recommend this film. I don't see fans of Westerns really liking it. I don't really see fans of drama really liking it. And really, if you're looking for an anti-Western, there are better films out there. And this is a story that probably could have been told in much more capable hands. Tommy Lee Jones' hands just weren't the ones to do it. All of that said, The Homesman gets a 2.5 out of 5. So that's it for this episode of Romney's Reviews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.